What is going on folks? Cannabis Stock News today and in today's video I'm going to go over how to set up your stock chart with candlesticks and indicators for beginners. I'm going to show you my favorite indicators and just how to set everything up so you can analyze it efficiently folks. And for this video I'm going to use first go to uh, finance.yahoo.com and I'm going to go to the stock grow generation grow generation that's grwg uh, just for this example and first thing you want to do after you go to the the stock go to any stock and uh, click on chart <clears throat> and then you'll see this chart here and you got a bar chart by default and all, all you have is uh, the bar chart which will show you if you have your mouse over it, it'll show you the open, high, low, and close in the in the left side over here. But it doesn't tell you much other than the volume at the bottom as well. You can see it in in these upward bars, and you see these lines. But if you're trying to really analyze the stock, um, you're gonna want to be using candlesticks, not lines. So definitely get out of the habit of looking at uh, line charts. So what you want to do first is, uh, you can change that right here, but let's go to full screen. There's that button on the top right that I clicked on to go to full screen. And now I'm going to click on this down arrow for line, and let's go with hollow candle. We could go with uh, candle that looks like this, and the reds and greens are kind of hard for me to distinguish, so I like to look at hollow candle. In this example, with with hollow candle, um, I'm going to zoom in by scrolling upward with my mouse. Um, with hollow candles, the green, the white bars are the green bars, and the red bars are the red bars. So the white white ones are upward bars and red ones are the downward bars <clears throat> all right so we've, we've we're looking at the candlestick view so now if we're looking if we're studying candlestick patterns um like this looks almost like a three white soldiers pattern here you could identify different patterns much easier or actually you can't you can't really view them at all with lines and beautifully you could do so with candlesticks all right, what's the next step? Well, let me push these, push this to the side to make it a little bit bigger. And we want to add some indicators. So I'm going to click on this plus next to indicators in the top left. First, I'm going to add a, add a moving average. Um, by, by default, it wants to give you the 50-day moving average. Let's add the 50-day moving average with this blue color. So I'm just going to leave it, leave all these defaults and hit save. And now we have this blue line. So we could use, uh, if you know how to use uh, moving averages, you could, you could say, okay, cross over the 50 day moving average, or it's getting support from the 50 day moving average in some cases, maybe let's add two more moving averages. I'm going to add the 100 day moving average in black. And then I'm going to add another indicator again and then click on moving average. And then I'm going to choose yellow for the 20 day MA. Oops. I hit the I hit the wrong thing. I'm going to go back to this and moving average change the period to 20 and save. Oops, I did that wrong. Cuz I have the color. I have two blue lines now, so let me go and uh see if I can control Z that. No, nope, can't do. It. Okay. Yeah, if you put your mouse right here, you could see the the one I just added was the uh 20. So I'm going to hit the X. It erases that line. Go back to indicators, moving average, 20 day moving average, and I wanted a yellow line for that one and save. So now you see a faint yellow line and you might want to use the 20 day average for a more 
whichever moving average you're looking at, you might be looking at all three of the moving averages. You might watch how they react to each other. All right. There's different ways to study moving averages, and that's a whole other topic, but um, this will get you started to at least getting used to um, keeping them in mind. Now I'm going to add my three favorite um, graph indicators now, starting with the RSI. So I click on indicators and I selected RSI. I'm going to leave all the defaults here and I'm going to hit save. Now what RSI does is it gives you a number between 20, uh, between 0 and 100. And if it's, it, they say that if it goes below 20 or above 80, that's um, tw below 20 would be oversold and above 80 would be overbought. So if it's over 80, you might not want to buy it. And you you know might want to expect it to go down, and if it's below twenty, then you might want to think about buying it. And more aggressively, um, thirty and seventy are kind of more more aggressively. If it's under thirty, people consider it over oversold as well, and a good buying opportunity. So you can mouse over here and 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 over seventy for overbought. So you can mouse over and see on the left side it shows you right here the number for that period so you can uh, mouse over any specific time period say at this high period where it where it peaked recently on 12 5 22 you see the rsi was 75 so that may give you an idea you might compare it to what it did over here the rsi was in the 50s and around touching 60 only Anyway, you might look at a lower point in the RSI. Here it's at 33, and then it now currently it's at 50. And we're on the one-day interval still, and that's the default in interval to kind of check out the RSI, the normal normal interval. The next indic indicator I'm going to add is the MACD. And I'm going to just leave all the defaults and hit save. Now the MACD will has a graph here with two lines on it. It's a blue line and this color, I'm not sure what color this light colored line is, if it's orange, yellow, or red, color blind here. But whenever the blue line crosses above the other line, that's a good buying opportunity. And people are always looking out for that. So right here where my mouse is, the blue line crossed over and it stayed over it. So that was a good buying opportunity and vice versa. If the blue line crosses over, crosses under the other line, that's when you, you don't want to be holding it probably. If it's, if it's going to dip over for a long time like it did here. Same way over here, you can see that the blue line stayed over the other line during this period and it crossed under it during this period. All right. And the third indicator I'm going to add is maybe a lesser known indicator because you have to scroll down to find it. It's called the check in money flow or check in MF. I'm going to leave all the defaults again and I'm going to hit save. So this created this third graph down here. Um, now, the check in money flow has a zero line and it has a little line graph that goes up and down and it has like numbers like in this case uh, negative 0.3 and positive 0.3 is the max that it's going to but they say that when the whenever um, when the graph when the line uh, crosses above the zero line, that's a good buying opportunity. So just looking at the check-in money flow, this would be where it's crossing over, over the zero line and it's staying over for a long time. So that's your buying opportunity. If you saw something like this and you think it's going to stay up, you can buy it right there and boom, it would have been a great time to buy it. And you'd watch out for when it, the opposite, when it crosses under that's whenever you don't want to be holding it. If it's going to cross under and stay under the zero line 
of the check in money flow for a long time. And um, going back to the um, the candlesticks, just for beginners, this video is so. I'm going to zoom in again by scrolling up on the mouse. Um, just take any candle here. It'll take the most recent day. If I highlight the day, it'll it'll tell me the open, high, low, close, volume, percent change. It'll tell me all these details in that box, in this box right here on the left side. But what the candlestick has, it has... Um, it's going to be either green or red. Again, green is po a positive, meaning the close was above the open. And red meaning the close was below the open price. And now you see the little, the bottom wick and the top wick, it's called tail or wick of the candle. Um, that's, that's the high and the low. So it gives you a lot of information just by looking at it visually instead of having to pull your mouse all over the place in a line chart and keep track of things in your head. You could visually see patterns forming with the high, low, open, and close. Um, I, could, I could look around here and find a, a good example of one probably. Here's a pattern here. It looks like it's... Um, it sort of looks like an engulfing pattern where the this this green bar engulfed this little red bar and then it moved up from there that would have been a buying uh signal um there's plenty of uh candlestick patterns to look for i would recommend looking at investopedia or just searching searching YouTube or you can check out my other videos. I have a lot of candlestick analysis. Um, just read all you can about candlestick analysis and about indicators and then you'll be um, you'll get to know a lot of a lot about um, how to do your stock trading. So this this was uh, hopefully helped you out in uh, in how to set up your your, your stock trading view using Yahoo Finance. And good luck to everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time on Cannabis Stock News Today.